I shall begin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We live in a world of change. Many countries are changing at a fast pace. And one of those countries which is changing, albeit at a more slow pace, is Switzerland. I don't know if you've been to Switzerland. I've been a couple of times, not least when I did some work experience with London Met University. We spent many days at the United Nations in Geneva doing some dummy booth, and that piqued my interest in Switzerland. So when I was asked to choose a positive news story about what's going on in the world, at the moment I decided on Switzerland. And the positive news story from Switzerland is that Switzerland has voted recently in a referendum for same-sex marriage. Two-thirds of voters have voted in favour for legal recognition of same-sex marriage in that country. Now, Sweden is a very, uh, Switzerland, forgive me, Switzerland is a very democratic country. The country is divided into cantons and people living in those cantons often vote on all kinds of matters. And national referenda are also common. Now, although the Swiss government and the major political parties in Switzerland were already in favor of introducing same-sex marriage. One particular political party was against it, and they got together a petition that made this topic go to a referendum. So it didn't get passed straight away, it went to a public vote in a referendum. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about those political parties in a moment. But the main body which was pushing for this change to Swiss law was called the Yes Campaign. One of the people representing the Yes Campaign was called Jan Muller. Now, when this vote came through, he said that this was a historic day for Switzerland and a historic day for the LGBT community. Why is it a historic day for the LGBT community in Switzerland? Well, not only does it mean that people of the same gender can now marry, that might mean gay people or lesbian people, it also means that those couples can also adopt children and lesbian couples can also um, go for sperm donation which means that they could have um, children that way as well. Prior to this Switzerland did recognize a civil partnership but now it recognizes same-sex marriage. In general it means a fair equality in human rights for Swiss society. The uh, main political party uh, that I was going to talk about that is in favor of this change is called the Free Democratic Party, uh, combined with the Liberals in Switzerland. And one of their speakers is the Justice Minister, Karin Keller-Suta. And she welcomes the positive result of the referendum. She says that in Switzerland, whoever loves each other will now be able to do so. However, as we know with all positive news stories, there might be another side to the story. And that is the political party which stands against this. This is the Swiss People's Party, a conservative party, a right-wing party. And the speaker from that party called Monica Roiger 
cites concerns about the traditional family in Switzerland, whatever that means, and children's welfare. I suspect she doesn't recognize that when she means children, some of those very children will grow up to be LGBT. So yes, uh, it's a positive news story, but we always have to recognize the fact that what is positive for some people, there will be some dissenting voices that see it as a negative story. I just want to widen out the topic slightly to say that Switzerland has become now the 30th country in the world to recognize same-sex marriage. Uh, the Netherlands was the first one in 2001, and various other countries have followed suit. Canada in 2005, for example. Many of the Nordic countries recognize same-sex marriage, which is so often the case in terms of leading and pioneering social policy. The only country in Asia, by the way, to recognize same-sex marriage is Taiwan. Again, on the flip side, there are many countries which don't recognize same-sex marriage. And in fact, many countries criminalize homosexuality. There are over 70 countries which do this. These include Iran, Nigeria, Pakistan, Kenya. But I want to finish off with a few thoughts that it's interesting that Switzerland takes this to a vote, to a referendum, it's very democratic, but really should it even have gone to a vote in the first place? Surely someone's sexual orientation is a human right that exists and it should be recognized full stop. It shouldn't even have the ability to be voted against by some people. That's one idea. It's an idea that I agree with and that many other people agree with, but that's one of the fundamental thoughts I have on it. Uh, but my final thought is much as the laws change in many countries, uh, it doesn't actually help you find a partner does it? Even though it might be legal, but that's a whole other story and maybe for another speech another time. Thank you very much for listening.